The Fermi Paradox asks the question, if there is other intelligent life in the galaxy, where are they? After all, planets capable of supporting life and civilizations are thought to have existed for billions of years before our own planet did. That's plenty of time for civilization to have arisen and colonized the entire galaxy. While it's always possible and perhaps even likely that civilizations are simply a lot harder to see than was thought during Fermi's day, it could also be that some great filter or filters exists that either make intelligent life very rare or preclude intelligent civilizations from existing long enough to colonize a galaxy. While there are many possible great filters, some are a bit more disconcerting than others, so here are 10 unusual and even disconcerting scenarios that could explain or even dissolve the Fermi Paradox. Number 10. Life almost never becomes complex. Life on Earth appears to have had a very easy genesis. Literally as soon as microbial life could arise here, it did. From there, however, something kept it from evolving to higher forms of life for nearly 1.8 billion years. After that, complex life exploded in a flurry of evolution. But why everything paused for so long is a complete mystery. Reasons for this could include environmental factors and realities, or even biological ones. For one microbe to ingest another and incorporate it into its makeup as opposed to digesting it might be a very rare occurrence. As such, the universe may indeed be teeming with life, but it's predominantly simple life, and only rarely is it possible for it to break out and become complex. This might make Earth a fluke, and if so, you as a member of an intelligent species are one of the rarest phenomena that can happen in the universe. Number 9. Civilizations do not survive their atomic age. When a civilization gains the ability to destroy itself entirely, then there's always the risk that it may actually go through with it. So far, we have not, but we've come close in incidents like the Cuban Missile Crisis. In more recent years, geopolitical situations have backed away from such levels of tension, but nuclear weapons are still an elephant in the room when it comes to whether we will survive as a species long term. This is not to say we will destroy ourselves. We may make it past that point and go on to use nuclear weapons in space as tools rather than weapons. If that's the case, then the question will be answered, and that at least humans had the capacity to avoid disaster. But what of aliens? The truth is we know absolutely nothing about them, or indeed if they even exist. But what we can say is that a technological alien civilization will know of splitting or fusing the atom. It's science that is universal across the entire universe, as evidenced by galaxies made up of stars that are themselves powered by fusion reactions. Anyone that has science will know of this, and whether they survive that knowledge remains to be seen. Whether we survive also remains to be seen. Number 8. Civilizations are out there, but have a reason not to be seen. It could be argued that once a civilization becomes a technological civilization and goes through the process of doing that, then the cat would already be out of the bag as far as being visible to other civilizations. After all, our first radio signals left Earth a century ago, and we leak radio constantly from this planet to this day. Some of it is intentionally very powerful, such as the Arecibo signal, which was done in such a way that it might easily be picked up by an alien civilization at very long distance, but only if they happen to be looking at the right time. In reality, most of the time it's actually difficult to see us, out past a radius of about 100 light years, the radio from our civilization has not yet had time to propagate. And within that radius, any civilization that might spot us would need to be looking right at us to pick anything up. And even then, they may pick up only our most powerful radar. What they won't see are tropes, such as the Berlin Olympics broadcast, which would have been hard to pick up outside Berlin, much less light years away. Perhaps easier to detect would be indicators like the technosignature of CFCs and related chemicals in our atmosphere. These are industrial chemicals that have no source in nature, so it seems more likely that an alien civilization would detect us through spectrography rather than other methods. During the heyday of industrial production of CFCs and the corresponding ozone hole that resulted, it was not yet in the public debate that an alien civilization might be able to detect that. One must ask a question here. Do we really know enough about the universe to continue to unintentionally broadcast our existence to anyone that might be looking? For all we know, it's not wise at all. After all, in order to sneak through a lion's den, one does not cover themselves in a suit made out of steak. Rather, you tiptoe and hope. Hopefully, the universe is not like that, and the vast distances between stars severely limits interactions with any potentially dangerous civilizations. But, in any event, it might make sense for anyone to mitigate the potential threat by intentionally hiding. 
There have been a few ways advanced recently on how to do that, such as using laser light to mask certain signatures, but thinking on that is still in its infancy. But the point is, that door swings both ways, and aliens may wish to hide their existence from us, in which case they may be there, but they simply, and perhaps prudently, hide their civilization from any prying eyes that may be lurking out there, including our own civilization. Number 7. Civilizations do not survive climate change. Given that CFCs are an artificial technosignature of an industrial civilization, or a terraforming civilization looking to warm up a planet, with that comes other industrial activities that change the makeup of planetary atmospheres. This includes things like the addition of carbon dioxide, which can warm planets. While CO2 is actually a completely natural and common gas in its own right, it can also be produced by civilizations such as our own that affect the composition of a planetary atmosphere. That changing of the chemical makeup of an atmosphere will result in climate change, both naturally and unnaturally. It's simply a property of these gases, and it can be dangerous. And while it might be also mitigated through technology and alternative energy sources, it has to be said that we cannot yet easily do that for various reasons, and may never be able to. That may also be the case for alien civilizations, and that they always go through a phase of energy production that changes their climate unnaturally, and the limits of technology never allow for a viable solution. If so, like nuclear weapons, it may be that a solution to climate change is not often found in the universe, and as a result, intelligence almost never survives for very long. Number 6. We have no idea what an advanced civilization actually looks like. The previous entry was admittedly anthropocentric, and we may well find solutions to climate change and avoid extinction from it, but what does a civilization that has passed that danger zone look like? We can speculate, but ultimately we don't know. And with questions such as what the limits of far future technologies like nanotechnology and transcending past a technological civilization to a machine civilization still unanswered, it may well be that we simply don't know what we're looking at even if we do see evidence of an exocivilization. This could have profound implications. Say that alien civilizations have science we simply haven't thought of yet, or potential means of communications that we're only just now beginning to be able to study, or it may be that being visible for a very long period of time is simply too expensive for anyone to bother, and that contact signals are instead timed to correspond with astronomical events that most in the galaxy can see, such as an impending supernova. It may be that only then, coinciding with such an occurrence, is contact attempted because everyone happens to be looking. In such a case, we could go from not knowing of any other alien civilizations in the Milky Way to knowing about tens or even hundreds in a single day. Number 5. Civilizations almost always destroy themselves in first contact warfare. There is a viewpoint, perhaps even prevalent, that aliens would necessarily be, well, better than humans. The idea is that they would have progressed beyond warfare on their world, and devoted themselves to the peaceful exploration of the universe, while we humans sit here on Earth awaiting our ultimate end at our own hands. But this is by no means a guaranteed state of affairs. It could also just as easily be that we live in a ridiculously hostile universe, akin to predatory animals on a plane competing for whatever they can eat. Indeed, it takes some kind of an aggressive tendency to leave your planet at all and venture into space even if it's done in a spirit of exploration. Passive species may simply see no need to do this. That could ultimately mean that as far as colonizing and exploring a galaxy is concerned, the more aggressive you are, for better or worse, the better. This can get even worse than the realm of the biological. How aggressive could an artificial intelligence be, or say a machine civilization far more advanced than us? Such a thing could be enlightened in some way, or it may want to convert all matter, biological or otherwise, into materials usable for its own ends. Such a thing may place no value on biology at all, seeing it as an inferior chemical process, and as such could be amongst the most aggressively dangerous things imaginable, leaving no hope that it could ever be reasoned with if encountered. And this could mean that first contact just never goes well, and that civilizations immediately go to war upon direct contact, in such a scenario, one hopes we never accidentally make first contact with an alien species. Number 4. There is no Fermi Paradox because we are utterly, utterly alone. When pondering the Fermi Paradox, one must make a concession, that intelligent life in the universe is possible because our own existence proves this. That alone would suggest that there are others out there, but there is another possibility, 
that we are the ultimate in flukes, and amid all the stars and galaxies of the universe, we are, and always will be, the only incidents of intelligent life in the universe. While this seems unlikely and in some way requires human civilization to essentially be the most special thing to ever occur in the universe, an argument can be made for it. There are a number of potential filters within this idea. One is that Earth is a ridiculously rare kind of world, with just the right conditions for intelligent life to arise, from environmental conditions such as long-term climate stability, the right amount of extinction events, and the conditions needed to favor the development of intelligence, and even geologic conditions, such as plate tectonics and even the presence of a large moon. Standing against this hypothesis is that Earth may not have always been the only world in the solar system with conditions such as these. Indeed, Venus may have once had oceans and plate tectonics itself, suggesting that Earth-like worlds aren't all that rare. But then you get into stellar types. It's unclear if a civilization could develop around red dwarf stars, for example. And stars larger than our sun generally don't live long enough for a civilization to arise, as far as we know. But there are also points made that stars like orange dwarfs might actually be better than our sun for life, at least to get started. Another related possibility is that we may simply be early in the game, and that intelligent life in the universe is rare now, but as the universe ages may become more common. Or it could also be that continued evolution on Earth will produce more intelligent civilizations as time goes on here, and providing that we're still around, we may eventually be accompanied by another intelligent species on this world, perhaps evolved dolphins or octopi. Will we go to war with them? But in the end, the sheer number of stars in the universe seems to stand against us being entirely alone. Other civilizations may be too far to detect, or may not exist at the same time we do, but odds still are that somewhere out there exists someone else. Number 3. There is no Fermi Paradox because they're already here. Looking for small objects in the solar system steps a bit beyond the idea of a needle in a haystack. Finding a needle in an ocean might even be too tame. Hidden in the vast distances between objects in the solar system are any number of small asteroids, rocks, dust, and even possible alien technology. At present, we wouldn't know about it if it were there, and even in the far future, we probably would have to accidentally stumble upon it, except in a few situations. One of these might be the presence of artificial lighting on an Oort cloud object. While there is no evidence whatsoever for this, it is marginally possible that there might be someone out there, and we might be able to see their artificial lighting, even with current equipment. Or there may be zones where interstellar objects captured by Jupiter might accumulate, and by looking there, some artifact, or even just trash from an exocivilization, might at some point have been captured. Or, more ominously, it's also possible that active probes might lurk in the solar system, placed there by exocivilizations interested in studying this world, perhaps long ago wondering if someday intelligence might arise here. It's anyone's guess what a probe of this nature might do, but speculative ideas include 3D printing out custom life forms to make contact with us at some point, or exchanging cultural information with us via direct real-time communications with it. Or it may also simply watch for some technological marker that represents something that the other civilizations of the galaxy cannot tolerate, such as advanced artificial intelligence. At that point, the probe might awaken and return us to the Stone Age to prevent development of it. Number 2. Civilizations do not survive artificial intelligence. One of the major purely technological threats to the existence of our species are nuclear weapons and their proliferation but it could easily be that as we march on through future technological advancement, they may become a secondary threat to something that could potentially be far more menacing, artificial intelligence. There are many scenarios of just what might happen if a highly advanced artificial intelligence were ever to get out of control, ranging from the proverbial paperclip maker that turns the entire galaxy into paperclips, to horrific visions of malevolent computers somehow gaining control of nuclear weapons. While it remains to be seen how likely any of these scenarios might be, the point is that this may not be a problem solely for humanity, but in fact anyone in the universe that develops AI, and it may just as easily pose a threat to any civilization in the galaxy. In short, the development of AI by anyone in the galaxy could pose a threat to everyone else, making it one of the chief threats to all life in the entire universe. The unpredictability of just what might happen if a superintelligent general AI were ever created notwithstanding, it could simply be that civilization always ends with its development, its creators going extinct at the hands of their creation. 
Number 1. The Immortal Galactic Dictator This scenario is among the most chilling, and has been advanced in science fiction several times, including a variant of which forms the basis of the Mass Effect trilogy. It's the idea that within our galaxy there is someone, or something, that hides itself and simply prevents any other species from colonizing the galaxy, solving the Fermi paradox in that there is plenty of intelligent life. It's just being destroyed or held down by some kind of invisible galactic dictator. This could come in two general forms, either a biological or partly biological species that aggressively destroys anyone that might pose a threat to their hegemony. Another option might be a machine civilization, either formerly biological that transcended the technology or an out-of-control artificial intelligence. This hidden dictator would have several reasons to engage in this behavior. Number one would be its own security. It may have been among the first, or was the first, civilization to arise in the Milky Way, and sees any up-and-comers as a threat. This may be especially so for an artificial intelligence, that may have once seen the species that created it as a threat, and perhaps it caused their extinction to preserve itself. Another might be resources. If a species had every intention of surviving trillions of years into the future, there will come a time when resources for generating energy are going to become scarcer. It may see the idea of leaving the galaxy in a natural state as desirable, and is destroying other civilizations to prevent the galaxy from becoming too crowded in the old age of the universe. Such a dictator would probably be best served by hiding itself, at least until the moment of destroying unwitting civilizations is at hand. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently addressing those typing in the comments that my voice sounds a bit off. I'm under attack by microbes again. It doesn't happen often due to a strong immune system brought on by eating lots of vegetables as part of my ongoing retribution campaign against the plants for the great oxygenation event and subsequent mass extinction. But this time, I lost the battle with the microbes. As soon as I get over this, I shall go after the microbes too with the eating of yogurt. And on that note, check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.